So first off, um, apologies. I've, I've been a bit like, um, uh, I guess, like a, a little bit away the last few days. I my, uh, my my brother just had a kid, so I've been kind of like wrapped up in family stuff. But um, kind of getting so some I think a, a few of you have emailed me, and I've been a little slow. So apologies for that. Um, but anyway, we're we're kind of gonna gonna proceed with with some of the stuff that we wanted to cover from, from last week and then get back to brainstorming. So just the, so basically here's the, the agenda for today. Uh, the first thing I want to do is actually try a little experiment with the processing sketch that, I, that I've messed a little bit with. I have a feeling it's not going to work properly, <laughs> but I, but I want to actually at least try it. And it, it's this idea of, I, I call it exquisite shader. It's kind of like ex, exquisite corpse, but it's a shader. Um, and it, the idea is to try to, um, well, you'll see in a moment, I, I, I have a feeling it's not going to work anyway, so, so I'll explain it after we've seen it break. Um, then I want to show you a few demos that we didn't have time for last week. So just like some, you know, nice uh, skill building stuff. So like we, um, we did a little bit of this in my class last, last semester, uh, but for those of you who weren't in it, and we're going to try to show a little bit of like how to scrape, how to gather data sets, how to pre-process them, and, and, and how to generally like pr do pre-machine learning stuff, you know, preparing stuff. Um, and then I want to do a tutorial on pix to pix mainly, uh, and some NDC GAN stuff. And hopefully all of that will more or less just take us through the first half of today. And then I want to set aside the, this, I, I think, uh, and then the second half, um, we'll, we'll kind of try to do a more guided brainstorming session than, than you know, last, last week it was, it was sort of a free-for-all. We were just kind of like going around the room and trying to, trying to build stuff. And now I want to maybe like try to make it a little bit more organized or, or a little bit more intentional, I guess. So that's going to be kind of the, the idea. Um... And, okay, so just a few admin issues. Uh, AI Lab tomorrow is on. Um, t uh, the exact topic is TBD. I'm, I'm trying to figure that out right now. Um, I'm going to be away from basically the, what, what, what will it be? So to, uh, next Thursday we have class, and then I'm probably leaving that evening for, for a week, and I'll be like gone for a little bit uh, under a week in California. So that'll just kind of, that might affect office hours the following week. Uh, but more or less, like, that's just to look ahead. Next week should be more or less normal. Um, and again, I mentioned this at the ML4A meetup. I don't know, how, did anyone here get tickets to that? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to talk about. So for those who are interested in coming but it's sold out, like, come and talk to me. We'll figure it out. Um, we have to make sure that we don't, like, that, like, uh, we're not supposed to have more than a hundred people there or something like that, but uh, of course people get ticket, get RSVPs and then don't go, and so we want to try to balance out the people the RSVP no shows with with people who want to go but but it's sold out. So basically, like if you're interested, just come talk to me. Uh, <laughs> and um, yeah, that's all for for admin. Uh, I'll get back to this. Actually, I wanted to show you a quick thing um, that Chris shared. Uh, basically, this guy here, Drew Stock, he's experimenting with Runway's new. Hang on a second. R so Runway has this um, feature that's not yet um, not yet fully developed, but it's called Chainer. And Chainer basically will let you take models and chain them together into more complex models. So this is an example. This is this guy playing with the Runway uh, interface for doing this. So check this out. Basically. What he does is this is how it will look like. So it's it's uh, I th I think maybe the alpha version is in, is available now. Basically, like he pulled up I am to text, and he pulled up attention again. So remember how these things work, right? I am to text takes an image as its input and outputs some text describing it. I know it's really hard to see, right? There's kind of a box here. It's like really hard to see, but there's a box here. So it takes an image. It goes through the IMP text pipeline, it's a neural network, and then it produces some text captioning it, right? Um, and then attention again does text to image, right? So the natural thing is this is the whole head swallowing the tail 
idea that I kept mentioning is that you just replace yeah, this with that, right? And then you have IMS text going to attention gem. So this is kind of how fluid the interface will be. So he puts in an image of a dolphin, it captions it, a white bird flying over a body of water, that goes to attention gem, and then that gives a white bird flying over a body of water. So that's kind of like uh, and a good example of, of tying two models together. And this is really what we're going for. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep on trying to develop this idea. However, like, uh, not concrete it, it, it is, we're, we're going to keep on trying to build in this idea and hopefully, hopefully expand our scope. Uh, so, yeah. The uh, because when we do the when we do the guided brainstorm, we're we're really kind of going for for stuff like that. Um, okay, so now what I'd like to do is before getting into the slides, I want to uh, I want to try this exquisite shader thing. So I need let's say let's start small. I need two volunteers um, <laughs> who have processing with OSCP five installed and who are on um, AirDrop. So I'm just going to dra draft people. So, Because um, you don't have to do too much. OSCP5? Uh, uh, the, the processing, not, not P5. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Where, where are you in, the, in the AirDrop? Are you here? Maybe also Azalea? Um, I don't know if I have OSCP. Oh, you don't? Okay. Let's uh, dunk fill, maybe? I'm, I'm Nicolas. Oh, you're, where are you, right there? Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, I want to send you two up, oh, sender, sender two. I think sender, yeah. Let me send you this. And uh, who else is here who wants that? I need, like, just two. Computer. Computer. Very descriptive. Uh, this one? Somebody else was computer last year. Yeah. Yeah. And anybody else here? What's that? Oh, uh, are you on the airdrop? Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, good. So I sent it to three people. I want you three to open that processing sketch that I sent you. And uh, wait for further instructions. <laughs> um, and I'll open this exquisite shader. Right? Not yet. Don't run it yet. Uh, oops, new version. No. Let's go some shorter. This. And okay, so here's the idea. You see where it says remote IP and name? Mm -hmm. So for the three of you, I need you to switch remote. Oh, first of all, which, which network are you on? Are you on NYU? You should be on the NYU network. Yeah. And hopefully NYU network doesn't uh, swat fire. I think you can do stuff. I don't know okay. All right. Well, hopefully. Yeah, All right. Let's see. For... Well, we'll see. We'll see in a moment. Yeah. And then change the remote IP to to the, the my IP address. So 10.17.105.148. Okay, so just change that remote IP to 10.17.105.148. Mm -hmm. And uh, also change the name to your name, basically. And then when you have done that, you've got the IP and everything. I want you to, one second, I want you to run that sketch. So just go ahead and run it. And I have to remember the. So are you running it? Yeah. So what? Yes. There's, yeah, okay. Um, I should, there should be two more. Okay, Aiden, there you go. See what's going on there? You got, you got. Controlling my screen, I have allotted like several pixels to you. Yeah. Um, there should be a third one. Did you get the IP address? Yes. 
So while, while that's happening, the idea is that um, you are sending me a one-dimensional signal, the position of your mouse, and I have in the background here a shader, which is this right here. Here's, which one is it actually? I forgot. Um, hang on. So, uh, any, any issues? So remember to change the remote IP address. What? I'm sorry? Yeah, it was uh, 10, 17, 105, 148. Okay, that's okay. The two is enough. So I'll. Uh, oh, you did? Okay, now you're there. Okay, good. So yeah, you can move the mouse, move your mouse. Okay, all of you are. All of you are. Um, now, you're, now you're inside my computer. So now what I'm going to do is, first of all, I have a shader running, which is, which one is it? It is number sine wave dot, yes, I think it's this one, the first, yes. So I have this shader that makes a bunch of blobby sine waves. Here it is. I'm going to, oh, it's opening Xcode. Hang on a second. Open with, um, let's open brackets. And uh, so it's just this thing that basically has 15 random parameters, and those parameters control the graphics. And the graphics look like um, this. Oh, there we go. You see what's going on? As you guys move the, your mouse, you're controlling the output of this sketch. So try to find some concert. Uh, try to try to. Okay, how about this? Everybody, stop moving. Oh, there is a time parameter that goes by itself, isn't it? Yeah, maybe the time parameter. I should make the. Is everyone actually uh, still? You're not moving. Oh, there is a time parameter. Right. I thought it would actually stop because maybe the the time. Let's see. Wait, why is it? Time. Yeah, it does change time. Okay, let me let me do something else. Let me let me see what happens if we get uh, exit the exit the sketch. And now I'm going to make it so that time doesn't move. Um, I wish I could do that. Right. Time auto. Wait, I forgot what time auto was supposed to do. Time auto. Uh. Maybe it's okay. How about this? If time auto is false, okay. Uh, enter that sketch again. So you, there you go, Nico, Aiden, Eugene. Okay. Now it's not moving, right? Okay. Okay, so one of, uh, let, let's say Aiden, just you move slowly. Uh, maybe a little more quickly. Okay, um, how about just Nico? You seem to control a little bit of this yellow content. Okay, stop, and now just Eugene. Basically, like the this whole thing is a function of all of you. It's actually like, let's see, I think you're the first three parameters, so P1 is over here. I mean, this, this formula is crazy. It's like really hard to follow. But the point is that the color is a function of all of these and the, and the position in the shader. Let's try, to add, let's try to add like two more people to it. Let's see if this will work. Um, I'm actually really happy this is working. <laughs> you want to show the uh, actual positions as well on the graphic. What do you mean? The actual three mouse positions. Oh, that, that's a good idea, yeah. I don't, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, maybe, the thing is, it doesn't really matter what they are, right? It's kind of, they're just numbers between zero and one, and then it just goes in this crazy formula. But okay, let's, let, let me send, let me send this to, uh, we're starting to get some more color here. Okay, how about this? I'm going to send, I need two more people. Um, so, sorry? Luis. Luis, 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 right here? Okay, 
Oh. Hello. What's going on here? Let's try that again. Where is Luis? Ah, oh, there you are. Oh, yeah. Okay. Who else wants to volunteer? One or two more? Who sees themselves here? Is Don Phil here? Don Phil. I'm going to draft you. Okay. So for those who just got it, change the name to your name and also this IP address. So 10, 17, 105, 148. And then I should see two new people here. All right, Luis. Don't fill. Got it. Maybe while we're at it, I'll send it to one more person. How about Ilana? Ah, oh, you don't have passing. Okay. Uh, who's that? Adrian. Hey, Adrian. I'm gonna show up as Mac. Mac. Yeah. Like this one, Mac no, Bow. Just Mac. Not seeing. Are you sure it's not Macbo? I think if you click the button, you might get it. Don't see. Actually, I'm looking for it. It shows the old Macs. Oh, because you're in an old Mac? You're on the bottom right? Yeah. But then the, all of these other ones are going to disappear. No, they're, they're they'll stay. They'll stay? Well, okay, let, let, let's, uh, yeah, not coming up. Okay, we'll, we'll come back to them in a minute. So, all right, everyone, try, try a little more. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? I'm going to join, actually, because I can, I can run a sender over here. So this is going to be one that's local host. So, so there it is. And now, now I'm in there also. So there's Gene. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so, it's, all right. Now we're starting to get some more color. That's wicked, right? Yeah. Okay. What is going on here? Um, why are we doing this? Well, um, I'm glad you asked. Because, because uh, so this is kind of cool because basically, in theory, I'd like for, for um, there's 15 sliders. So if there's, we could potentially like overload it with 15 people. But um, last time I did it, actually, like for some reason it would crash. I think I would have a divide by zero error somewhere in there that I couldn't, couldn't figure out. But anyhow, like this is a bunch of people controlling one sketch. And you can't really even quite tell what your contribution to it is, right? It's like, it's a little bit, um, you know, actually, like, one thing that might make this a little better is if all of the senders, if instead of just doing X value, this X value, you could do, what would it be, like, yeah. What if we did this, like, in, see your mouse move? We can actually make it smoother if we did x value equals lerp x value and then map all of that and then we could say like 0 .0, 0 0.1 so I mean if you want to do this basically what it'll do is it'll make your it'll make this thing a little bit a little bit smoother Hmm? Yeah, this 
it should maybe even 0 0.01. Now it'll go really slowly. Oh, I, oh, you know what? No. Okay, never mind. <laughs> because I have to. That's that's something I'll figure out. The, the point is that like what we have here is a a little system for taking in inputs from all of us, or from some some uh, amount of us, and then this complicated formula that takes all of those numbers and creates graphics, right? And I actually have a bunch more of these, although this is the only one that I've tested. There's a bunch of different different shaders. Another thing, another pipeline that I considered was um, if we do a sort of like, oh yeah, isn't that great? <laughs> um, another, another pipeline that I considered was like, what if we have, what if we kind of do a sort of whisper down the lane type scenario where I send an image to somebody, and then someone takes that image and they modify it with a shader, and then their output goes to somebody else, and then they modify it with their own shader, and then so on, basically, like in a chain, and then maybe even connect the connect the like you could do a feedback loop. Although then, where is the original from? Not clear. But okay, like um, that's another way of doing something similar. Yeah. Do you want to pipe that then into like the example before into image recognition and then into generation? Ooh. That'd be <laughs> because that's kind of like what I thought. Why you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. that would be kind of cool. Yeah. The, we could do that. The only thing is this probably wouldn't give us very much because it's just like a gradient. But in principle, the, some of the other shaders produce a little bit more more object-oriented graphics. You think say. this, because to me that looks like a heat map. So technically bit, like OPV, yeah. or maybe we pipe that into one layer, a specific layer. Can you do that? Like kind of like, you know, like this is kind of like the filter in a layer. Uh, what's I don't know if that makes sense. Filter in oh. So basically, if you take oh kind of like oh, oh, oh like layer. change change the weights of the yes. network like yeah. <laughs> that would be that would be that's interesting. That the thing is that well yeah we don't think about how that works. Exactly, <laughs> it but was yeah. like a be accurate. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. But but okay, it's it's kind of in the spirit of what we're we're trying to do, and I'm trying to develop this out a little bit more. But um, but just keep that in the back of your mind. We're gonna try to make more stuff like this. Yeah. And last thing, kind of like uh, because last semester we had the WebRTC class. I think that would be that would line super good WebRTC. So basically, just do it uh, in the browser. What, what this thing? Oh, yeah. oh do the, everything in the browser. Yeah, in the browser. So that you can actually see as well, maybe a little bit how the heat map. So that you have the shared canvas. Yeah. Um, and you can do it over the network. Yeah. That'd be cool. Latency, I, I, I might need some help on that, but if somebody... Sean is really... Yeah. But we did like a lot of uh, exercises with just shared cameras, like multiple people yeah. uh, getting mouse inputs, because WebRTC can, can do like camera, but it can take any, any data. So you have a data stream. I see. And it's zero latency, okay. right, because it's peer to peer. Yeah, yeah. Which is even better. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, that would be, that would be nice. Yeah, I think that would be a better way to do this, and probably a better way to do like also, just any kind of like you know, collaborative canvassing yeah. type stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to maybe explore that. Okay. Well, let me show you now. The next thing I want to do is. So thank you for that. Um, that actually worked not too badly. I think maybe like I overloaded it once with like fifteen people. That's the first time I tried it, and it and it and it, the whole thing froze actually. Um, yeah, I don't know why, but okay. So the next thing I want to do is. I want to show you now some of these scrapers and data set utilities. Um, now, I kind of, I don't remember whether I might have introduced them briefly last week. I did, right? No, not at all. Did I show data set utils? So maybe I, I think so. Okay. Okay. Then, then let's, let's actually show, let's show the scrapers first. And then uh, that I didn't show at all, right, scrapers? Okay. So I'm going to show you some, basically we're going to, we're going to shift gears and talk a little bit about um, utilities for um, for uh, working with data sets, basically creating data sets, pre-processing data sets, um, because we're gonna because if you end up doing any generative modeling or or running running your GANs or autoencoders, this is the thing that actually usually the funny thing is this is the thing that takes the most time or the most of your time, right? Because because um, like machine learning ultimately is you know. One minute of of uh, of like you doing stuff, and then hours and hours of waiting. 
Um, the thing that takes the longest to do is actually all the stuff before the machine learning, um, which is actually preparing a data set and um, even just obtaining a data set, right? That's hard enough. Uh, but even by preparing, it tends to be a pain also. So I'm going to show you some things that should make life a little bit easier for doing that. And then one thing I'm considering doing is like as a sort of homework is for us to begin to assemble a data set. So I'm going to ask everyone for like a thousand images, let's say. Um, and that's something that we can, in fact, I want to add that to the <laughs> data assignment. Okay, but that'll be later. So let me show you now. I'm going to go to my terminal. And if you, um, if you would, so this is, if you'd like to, uh, let me just, if you would like to, you can follow along, um, but, but like I said, I'm recording this. Oh, I also forgot to mention like the, what, what, I think I emailed you this, but what went wrong with the class recording last week was that I uploaded it and then it got taken down immediately because like at one, for like one second I showed, I showed this thing I did with the animals like being, uh, and then BBC got upset, upset with me or one of their bots got upset with me because it literally, as soon as I uploaded it, it was like, it was like immediately taken down. They've got, they've got some, and it was only like a, even like a part rectangle, like from a tweet, like part of the trailer embedded in a tweet that I showed in the browser, recorded on YouTube, and then that got taken down, right? And I, I had a bunch of copyright notices for neural aesthetic, but usually what they would do is what, um, they would want to monetize the content until you, I had to go through arbitration. It's like a horrible process. But this time they just, this is the first time that where they just straight up said this won't be visible, which I, and they, there's no, there's, it's really, it's really crazy. But anyway, I, I just need to, but what happened was that I was going away, so I couldn't, I couldn't, it was just on this computer, so I, I'm going to re-upload it today along with what we're recording now. Um, so please uh, make note if you see anything like, if, if any, if more than three pixels of the screen, um, are copyrighted, then, then we're gonna, gonna have problems with YouTube. But was it the pixels or was it the audio? You had audio as well. <sighs> Maybe. Was it it might have been the audio, but it might have been the audio. I don't know. YouTube has been very bad with this stuff. Maybe. They're so aggressive. And even the audio, it's like sounds of animals. It's like, okay. you know, it's like really. They have crazy bots. They have they have really aggressive bots, yeah, um, and they, they and all of the fair use and stuff. It just they don't they don't care. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, in any case, like I'll I'll upload both of the videos today, uh, today, presumably. So I'm gonna show you a few things from two places. One from ML for A guides, which you should already have. You may need to do a git pull. Who knows how to do that? If you do want to follow along on your computer, you got to do a little bit of a, you go into cdml for a guides and you would do git pull. Then, you know, you might already be up to date or you might get some changes. Um, but uh, if any, if anyone's having a problem with git, like I'll, we'll, we'll look at that after, like, or I'll deal with it separately. Um, this is just a demonstration that's being recorded, so, so don't worry too much about following. So what I'm going to do before showing you the ML for a guides is actually show you uh, a repository by your cohort, Aaron Montoya. Can you say his last name? Montoya? Montoya Montoya. Montoya, yeah. Um, who made a really, really awesome set of scrapers. Montoya Montoya scrapers, yeah. There you go. Um, let me actually. So he in his if you search in his repositories, you'll see he has this repository called Scrapers, which have I, I only actually use two of these utilities. I use the Bing and the Google Images. Basically, he has a couple of scrapers for scraping images from Google Images, Bing images which actually turns out to be even better than Google Images because you can, you can download more. Um, 
And also, he has an Instagram scraper, which I haven't used. I'm going to show you a different Instagram scraper, which is a little bit more official. Or it's unofficial, but it's really, really well maintained. Um, and then we can talk about assembling data sets. So if you were to, if you have, if you git clone this, right, and you, like, you, if you don't already have this, you have to install some prerequisites. So don't worry about doing that now. I'm just going to show you what it does. And then for those who want to, who actually want to install it and, and they're having problems with the instructions, like I'll, I'll do that separately. Uh, but I'm just going to show you once you actually have it, he explains how to use them. So like I would go to Google Images and there's, and it goes, okay. So it's in Google Images and then you do have to install some stuff and then basically, oh, the instructions are actually, let me see if I can get to the, yeah. So this is the main command. You would go like script, whatever it is that you want to download and however many images. So, okay, let's, let's actually try this. Um, I will go to scrapers, Oops. scrapers and there's, then I go to scrape or Google images and let's go, um, I'll say, okay, Python three. Scrape, script that is called a script.py, very descriptive. And um, what do we want to search for? Someone. Unicorns. unicorns, perfect. Unicorn or unicorns? One. Unicorn, and then let's just download like 100 images. So what it'll do is it'll actually open a, a new version of Chrome and it just starts scraping these. So at first it's, it's, what it, it's using Selenium. So it basically opens like a, a sort of fake Google Chrome window or like an auxiliary Google Chrome window and it automatically scrolls down for you and then it iterates through all of the images and it begins to save them. So you can do this on your computer and then come back and you know it will have downloaded some number of images. Now I, I put in 100. We'll look at this in just a second. Actually, let's look at it now. So you have to kind of not mess with Google Chrome while it's doing this. Otherwise, you can interrupt it. But if you go to wherever you have the scraper utility, I have it here. It makes a folder inside of here. You can see it's called Images Unicorn. And it does this weird thing where first it downloads them uh, without extensions. And once it gets through downloading them, it'll, it'll iterate, it'll rename them all to JPEG. I don't know why he has it set up that way. It should probably, probably maybe try to fix that at some point. But basically, what, because once it finishes, if this gets interrupted, they none of them have extensions for some reason. This is this is the raw content. Oh come on, go go. Is it downloading the the, the source or the thumbnails? The source. Right? It's down. No, it's downloading the actual images. Yeah, yeah, the full size. Ugh, what's going on? Uh, maybe. Or, or Google blocks you. Blocks you. No. News. When does it start blocking? Like uh, 10,000? Um, like, I don't it, know. It doesn't I'm, have like a, a, a random interval between the, the scraping or not? I'm not actually sure. Um, but this is annoying. <laughs> He should, yeah. Well, anyway, like these images, I think, like for example, if I, like if I name this .jpg, it's actually there. He has it. Oh, there, it, there it goes. So yeah. Sometimes, maybe it was just really big. Oh, three forty. Yeah, one of them is. 
It's not that big, but okay. No. So it's almost done. Now it'll get to... Some of them don't end up saving. I don't know why. Now it's converting them. And there they are. Now the thing is, um, okay, you can do like, okay, I, I think it maxes out at like 500, which isn't incredible. It also, like, if you um, go too far into Google image search results, they, they do become irrelevant, like, pretty quickly. Um, that was actually the basis for an installation by, by Heather Dewey Hagborg a long time ago. Um, she made this interactive Google that was called LGoog, and basically, which is Google spelled backwards. And so what it would do is what, whatever you would search for, it would actually just go to page 10,000. And so you would get search results that are apparently the opposite of what you search for because it's like as far away from the, you can't actually do that anymore. Like go click, like I want page 10,000 of the results. Like Google used to allow you to do that. Um, but now it's, now it's all that stuff is, is, you know, lock and key. So anyway, uh, I have a few things that I've downloaded here. Like I've been able to get maybe like 500 images from Google. So here's a bunch of sunsets. And so on. I got like uh, puppies, monkeys, cute monkeys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, now, and then he also has a, a Bing scraper, which basically works the same way. So I can go to Bing. What was it? Scraper Bing images. And I'll just go. Python 3 script. Okay, search for what? No, let's do something different. Something Pizza. different. Pizza. So that's the same thing. Okay, uh, we don't have to wait for it. It's just doing its thing. But the point is that this is one thing you could do. Another thing you can do is uh, okay so sometimes things are broken <laughs> so that's something to work out one thing that's really awesome is this Instagram scraper so this this works really nicely every once in a while it seems to get broken and then and then they figure out how to fix it it's really easy to install pip install Instagram scraper and then basically the way it works is that you type Instagram scraper and then whatever username that you want to scrape it'll scrape everything um, in fact if you do it if you lo if you scrape yourself because you, you also have to log in so you have to put in your username and password which will actually prevent me from doing the demo properly because <laughs> I don't want to log into my Instagram here but um, there might be a way to do this like without be nice if they were like, I could put it into a text file, but it doesn't have that. So anyway, like the scraper. Um, That's a public ID. Oh really? With a known password that I can censor out later or something? Yeah. Yeah, I need to log in though. The password's in there. Oh where? Oh really? Yeah. Okay. Where is it? Well, say say it again. What, um, well, what's where's the where's on the credentials? On Instagram, it's in the bio. Oh, really? Yeah. I know it's super. I think it's probably under the What? Sorry. What? Why is the password in your bio? Because it's public. Anyone can use it. Wait, this is. Are you serious? This yeah. is. That's but that's not the official like yeah, no. it's a project for a This is just pr <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll all right. All right, fine. So so let's try this. 
basically, let's get out of here. Let's just go to downloads. Um, oh, well, um, yeah, let me go to downloads. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go Instagram scraper. First of all, does it, yeah, I have it here. Instagram scraper. Well, okay, let's, who do we want to scrape? Who's your favorite? Name a celebrity or something. Or a great Tom Instagram Hanks. account. Tom Hanks. <laughs> he does uh, one, one glove Instagram. One glove. One glove. What? What? Are you doing? <laughs> what? Just take pictures of like a single glove that he sees like. Oh, a that's, that's his thing. Places. That's his thing. <laughs> All right, let's more exciting. Someone, something more interesting. A uh, joke account. Like, what's the best Instagram joke account? Um, there's, a, there's one called Ugly Design. This? Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> what the hell is this? <laughs> this is great. <laughs> Twin toilets. <laughs> this is pretty. Oh, <laughs> 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 so this is really good. Wait, are these pants? <laughs> oh, that's a chair, right? That's, that's great. Uh, anyway, before I get, let's try to. So now we'll do Instagram Scraper, this. And then you, you need a username. So, you know. All right, well, let's try this. You, and then P is going to be public. Okay, let's try this. Yep, now it's downloading. It's so good. Like this thing, it downloads really fast too. So for example, like, okay, this has how many images? Um, has a thousand images. So it's going to download a thousand, one, it should download 1200 images really quickly. It's already at 250. So let's actually go and look. And it'll download all of them too. So here's all of, it's amazing how functional this thing is. Like, I think you can, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You can, you can search for hashtags. So, like, you can. There are Instagram accounts that have tens of thousands of images. Like, I wanted to do again on sunsets, and there's something. There's an Instagram called Sunset Stream, which has just seven thousand images by itself, and like, there's. Oh, I don't like. I went to Snoop Dogg uh, because Snoop Dogg has forty thousand images on Instagram. I downloaded Snoop's entire Instagram <laughs> stream, and uh, I wanted to train again on it. But I mean, you know, it'd be a little crazy because, of course, like, how long did it take? I didn't actually try to train it yet. Um, it's not that much because it just downloads JPEGs, and you know, they're all like a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels. You can see these are just fifty kilobytes each. So, you know, or 100 kilobytes each. So, so look at this. A thousand images. They're all of them. This is all from Ugly Design. <laughs> and if you have it, download your own, by the way. This is another cool thing about it. It'll download not just your, like, it'll also download all of your, uh, what do you call it? The Instagram stories or whatever? You know, the, is that what it's called? Stories? Um, It'll download those, like even the ones that have disappeared, because you you, you don't know where they went, right? Like Instagram just keeps them, like. You, but then, but then apparently you can get them back at least by scraping them. I don't know if there's some. There must be some other way, but um, you can get all of those back. So if you, I, I think only for yourself. Obviously, you can't like get other people's uh, twenty four hour, or maybe you can. I don't know. Actually, it's a good question. But at some point, I think I downloaded Snoop, and I had like you know forty thousand forty thousand photos by Snoop. Like that's that's great. 
the fact that this thing can do it without and get away with it without Instagram. These are the kind of things that last for months at a time before Instagram changes their SDK. So, like, if I were you and you're and you think like at some point in the next few years you'll want to do something with Instagram, like download as many Instagram images as you can right now while you still can. Um, your cohort Sam Haynes here, he he downloaded uh, something like a hundred thousand images from Instagram, which I now have. Uh, which uh, were, at the time at least, had zero likes in them. Well, I showed this project before. And so you can, you can scrape quite a bit. Uh, what he did was he, in Instagram, there's no easy way to get a huge list of user account names, for obvious reasons. Uh, but it turns out that in Twitter, <laughs> that really is easy. And so he got this list of Twitter usernames that was like, like a, a million Twitters, and then basically he just wrote a script that would go through each of the Twitter usernames and see if any of them had an Instagram. And you know, something like 20% of, of Twitter usernames are also on Instagram. And then, then okay, then you get 20,000 Instagram accounts, and so, or 200,000 or whatever, and then it just downloaded all of them. And it would only download the ones that had zero likes. Um, but anyway, so this is, this Instagram is a great source of images. And then nice and square, you know, that's, <laughs> Gens love squares. So, um, so I would definitely, like, recommend abusing this tool. Okay, so, like, we, we downloaded this ugly design thing, so let's do something with it, right? What can we do? Um, well, uh, it's not so ugly. That's atrocious, you know, it's just like... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's kind of cool. I think the earlier one to call it tamer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, this is a great account. Anyway, all right. Sorry, I'm just getting carried away. Okay, so let's. What can we do um, with this? Well, first of all, if you want to train again, so usually Instagram images, I guess, are square, but sometimes they're not. You know. Okay, so this is like some of them are actually smaller than you would imagine. I don't know why, because Instagram, I think, natively is 1080 by 1080, but then maybe, I guess, it depends on what the source is. And then sometimes you can make them, yeah, this is 1080 by 1080. Usually they should be 1080 by 1080, but some of them will be rectangular. So like this one. Um, so you might need to do some pre-processing. So what you can do is use trusty ML for your guides. So if you go to ML for your guides, there's a folder inside called utils, cd utils, and then there's a file called python uh, dataset utils.py. It has a lot of dependencies, so like if you need help installing this, I'm, I can help you with it. Um, but basically, once you have it installed, you would be able to do this. And I do have some instructions. I do need to maybe like um, probably update the instructions a little bit. But basically, these are all the these are all of the inputs. So basically, you go input. So input source directory of images or an MP4. So let's try this. I'm going to do Python dataset utils dash dash input source, and I'm going to go to that some uh, uh, ugly design. So it's just a bunch of JPEGs. So here's my input source, and Let's do this. We'll say maximum images. We'll just do a random 50, 50 images. If you don't include this, it'll do all of the images. So just um, all of them. But just to keep this, let, let's actually do 20. So maximum is 20. And um, you can shuffle them if you want. You can skip any that are too small. And we'll go output there. Let's do this. We're going to put the results 
into same directory, but we're going to make something like, uh, you know, underscore post. So that's going to be the folder that I put them in. And then, then what can we do? So we'll say, I want to, okay, the next thing is like, you want to divide into a training set and a test set. If you leave this away, then, you, then it'll be zero for percent test, which means there'll just be one output folder. Um, it's nice, sometimes it's useful to, have, to divide it into two sets. You could do training and testing. And then, um, and then, okay, we'll come back to the save mode in a second. The next thing is, okay, what do we want them to come out at, right? What's the size we want? Let's do 512 by 512. So dash dash W 512, dash dash H 512. So the output is going to be, all of the images will be turned into 512 by 512. Does it do it by cropping or scaling? Uh, it'll, uh, this is, so that this is where this comes in. So this whole frac and frac vary, I know this is like a really weird, like, okay, so this is the way I do it. Um, it frac is a fr fraction between zero and one. It'll be what, uh, maximum size within the image, like a hundred percent of the, the maximum size or some cropped subset and then rescale to the max size. So like if the image is, let's say, 2,000 by 2,000, and you're going for 512 by 512, and frac is 0.95, it'll take a random crop of 95% of, of the same size, a random crop, or maybe a centered crop, and then resize it to, to your output dimensions. If it's smaller, then it'll, that, if the image is smaller than, your out, than what you want, then it'll just, then it'll rescale it up. Um, so and then you can uh, you can specify random or center or the yeah size. centered is like here if oh, you no, want okay, cool. so basically let's just do this I'll do the simplest one so let's just leave frac at one so we don't touch it at all which means it'll just take the image as it is and then take a and then take a random square crop or a random crop of the aspect ratio that this specifies basically so now and number is one. But you can go, okay, I want five random subcrops of the image, something like that. If you, this, is, this is good for augmentation. But let's leave it at number one. So I'll go, so everything I'll just leave at the default. And then action. Okay, what's action going to do? So action is some process, some post process for, for the image. If you have none, it'll just take a random crop and save it. So this, So by itself, action none will let you uh, get images of the size that you need. If you just do action none, let's say, um, and let, let's just see if there's anything else I need to do, landmarks, no. So let, let's just do that, like, let's try this. So, right, um, or is it, oh, because I have to do Python 3. I think it's Python 3. Python. Oh, there we go. Okay. So now it will, should have made a new folder called post. There it is. And here's all of the images. We made 20 of them and here's the results. All of them are now pleasantly sized 512 by 512, right? It just took 20 random ones. Let's do this now. Instead of action none, we can do one of these. Now all of these do different things. So um, so for example, let's try segment. I hope they all have the proper software installed segment. Uh, oh, right. I hate this thing where it does the... There it goes. Now it's going through all of the images, and what's it doing? It makes a simplified version of it. It's basically quantizing the colors. Now, why would you do this? What would be what would be a good reason to do this? Yeah. So, 
it, it could be for making a simplified representation of all the images so you could train pix to pix to go from the simple one to the more complex one. Because maybe you could like, for example, draw a design an interface that lets you like, you know, paint abstract blobs and then and then use pix to pix to convert that. Or let, let me make a more concrete use case actually. Instead of this uh, segmentation, let's try actually not segmentation but the outline. Um, sketch, yeah. Oh, this then the sketch thing. I th think I think it'll need me to write. So uh, okay, let's. And then I have to tell it where yes so again is. I think um, photo sketch path. Yeah, so I'll do this, and then photo sketch. Um, photo sketch path is going to be photo sketch. Did I download? Oh. Uh huh. And then photo sketch. This may not actually work because I don't know if I have all the software installed, but let's just say photo sketch model path is going to be is going to be pre-trained but I don't actually have that yet <laughs> so CD photo sketch so photo sketch is this thing that came out last week actually that does a really nice job of turning images into their outlines Right, so like this into this. So that's really nice because you could, let's actually, let's download the, download the pre-trained model. I'm just gonna put this into that folder. Photo sketch is here, and I'll just put this in here, unzip it, there it is. Okay, so now pre-trained is there, pre-trained, okay, sketch, so let's try that. I thought I just, oh right, because pip3 install, torch, torch range. Okay. Oh. Actually, I'm done. Mm. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, because I don't have CUDA here. Wait, no, I do have CUDA. Wait, why? Mm. Why is Torch? Do you have different Torch versions? Um, maybe, hold on a second, let's see if there's, if there's an easy fix to this. Oh, okay, so the binary doesn't come with torch support, fine. So maybe I can run it without torch support, so basically, um, Adam, photo sketch pressing, because I could, I should also just be able to run it. Oh, but it might take too long. <laughs> um, let's see if there's. No, that's Is not gonna work. Sorry. Can you just create an environment with the environment file? For uh, an environment, like what is that? Uh, what do you mean? You just like the virtual environment. Yeah, but the problem is that on OSX, 
Forge doesn't have GPU support. So the biggest... Okay, the point is that if you did, if you did this in Linux easily, well, like, we, what it would do is it would, we'll, we'll do, okay, basically it would do the thing that we showed, right? It, um, it would create this sketches out of all of those. So we're not going to see that right now. I do have a version that's not as that's not as good that we can at least look at for the demo right now, which looks like this. So instead of sketch, there's this very what I did before, which was similar to sketch, just not as good. But where is it? Um, oh, or H E D trace? Yeah, this like trace. Okay, so so this is like a similar. Actually, let's try that again. So the sketch that a part of the Aaron's like thing, that, like script that he wrote, like is that one of the capabilities that it has, or is that like a separate like, sketch? Yeah. This is a totally different repository called Photo Sketch. Yeah, Aaron didn't make that. It's different. Uh, let me. So you see what it did? It made these black and white. Right, you can tell that this came from the original images. In fact, what we can do is we can actually now add one more flag here. Save underscore mode. And then if you look at the documentation, save underscore mode. Split. So the, the default is output only, which means that after the whatever action it takes, it just saves that. But you can also save the original. So we can save the original either using split or combine. If split, they'll go into two different folders. If combined, they'll be concatenated into one image. Let, let me show you combined. Combined. You see, you see how that look comes? Now the, the whole photo sketch does a I think a better job of, of outlines, although although OpenCV you know isn't terrible, but but you get the idea. Now why would you do this, right? Like you've we I've showed you um, I'll show you some slides now on Pix to Pix because now we want to get into Pix to Pix. But the oh what time is it? 120? 12, 10, 11, 12. Oh wow, Jesus. <laughs> okay. Um, Pix to pix tutorial. Yeah, let's let's do this. So I'll I'll basically we'll we'll do the pix to pix tutorial after the break more or less. But I want to um, let me. I'll just show you a few slides very quickly, and then we'll take a break. Uh, but okay, you can see that we're doing this right now. Why why would we have this kind of processing? Well, if you look at pix to pix, the original pix to pix, it actually expects the data to be to come in exactly that form. So like the original pix to pix, the data sets all come in this kind of split view. You know, where like like if you download the facades training set, it'll just have these two images side by side. And that's that's so this literally you can take uh, the output from ML for utils and it goes directly into pix to pix um, or pix to pix HD. In pix to pix HD, it expects them to be in separate folders instead of concatenated. That's just the way that that repository is made. And so all you'd have to do is split it. So like if I, I can just delete all this and I could be do this instead of this, I'll do split. And now it just puts them into two different folders, one called train A and one called train B, which is exactly what they need to be called for pix to pix HD for anyone who's used it. So here's train A and here's train B. Right, so so little things like that. Um, do the uh, the file names need to be? They they have to be. Uh, they, they, it does it oh, okay as long as they're in the same order. They get loaded properly. Um, but yeah, that that could also be a. Um, in any case, um, what I want to do now is let me just show you a few quick slides and then we'll take a break. Basically, actually let let let's do a break now and then I'll show it to you before we go. Yeah. Okay, break time. Um, back at one thirty. It, it does. It just doesn't have. It does. It just if you install it from Pip, 
it doesn't uh, the tip binary doesn't have to be so I would have had to install the source uh, and that would have taken some time. Yeah. Uh, do you have a CUDA GPU on this one? Uh, yeah. Uh, NVIDIA GPU? Yeah, I thought, oh, really? I think so. Or For the old Macs? Oh. So nice. Oh, it doesn't, you know, I don't know because, okay. It, no way, really? Uh, yeah, these, are, these have Intel. It's like, forget it. Can't do anything. Yeah, apparently. Okay, let's try it. Yeah. Like, uh, no, CUDA needs NVIDIA. That's kind of like the problem. Uh, Paul Watson, are you yeah. going to be here next week? Or are you no, yeah, yeah, I will, I will be. Yeah. I, I just I, have office hours. So. Sorry? Uh, I just have an office hours. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. NVIDIA? Yeah. yeah, they are really, they, they want, actually I want to get a, I want to yeah. get a, a Windows machine now because it's just, there's less so many, like everything you want to do like um, VR or, you, you can't do, you can't test anything, it's like Macs are, Macs are just, they're nice but they so. Yeah. Gene, bouldering today? Um, uh -huh. I think I think today I might go visit my brother and his baby. Yeah. Oh, he got a baby. He had a baby last week. Oh, uh, Michael G. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Michael G. Is it a yeah. girl? It's a girl. Yeah. Sweet name. Um, the name is Mia. Yeah. Mia Love Kogan. M L K. Are you are you Godfather or any of your? Uh, Godfather is not really a thing that's done in in. You don't have something like that. So, I mean, you know, I'm a Godfather, like informally, like you know, I, I suppose, but um, but not not officially. Oh, that's very yeah. sweet. Yeah, yeah. Little kids, it's like it's very sweet. Yeah, exactly. So, so yeah, I think today I will definitely go bouldering at some point. I just not today. Yeah, I mean today is all the weather is kind of like. Yeah. It's too nice. It's too nice to be inside. But yeah. I love PyTorch. PyTorch is so much better than Nintendo. Yeah. Um, by the way, she Yo. went to uh, an NFT conference yesterday, which is non fungible tokens. Oh, what? That was yesterday? It was in New York. It was massive. I didn't know about it. It was like Anthony. Anthony got it. Anthony said, "Like, oh, do you want to go to that?" And because I'm, I last year I was totally into this topic. Then I kind of like forgot about it. Yeah, yeah. Because I was like, oh, okay, I'm not gonna well, do my. Well, I mean, we need to talk about it because this is I'm inching closer and closer to announcing this Abraham project. Abraham is that that? Uh, the 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 autonomous artist. Yeah. yeah. We, we, we have to, like, it's, we have, like, honestly, um, it's it's so massive, NFTs, it's so cool what you yeah, do with yeah, it. Oh, it's absolutely. like, yeah, yeah. what people do already with it, so they showed a few use cases where it's just like... What was your so favorite cool. use case? Um, so, especially for art, there was one, um, there was one project of an artist, uh, what was, the, what was the gallery name? So what she did is, so this would be perfect for this class. Yeah, yeah. She had a video file. She had a video recording of a performance piece she did ten years ago for the Whitney, uh -huh. um, which was a painting of the restaging a painting of the 16th century as a video, like really strong piece. And she basically had a copy of this video. All of the others were sold for like blah blah blah. But she, as if the artist, had one copy. And what they did is they um, sold tiny little pixel grids, tiny little pixel pixel squares of the paintings to collect of the video to collectors. Yeah. So you own like a square, and as a performance piece. They asked them if they could loan it, so with, with tokens, if yeah. they could loan the pieces, um, and you can say yes or no to it, so that they could show it live yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so basically, and they did everything like it's everything in the contract, and it was called atomizing basically this this video file. Yeah. And what they did then is then they some said yes, some said no. Um, so basically, you saw like this grid of black and 
and, and pixels that were actually in there. Yeah. Um, and then it showed up and they played the video back and they manipulated the pixels then. So it was basically the idea of, was like, you make a performance piece with the the owners. So basically you as an owner of part of this tiny little grid, yeah. you have basically an impact on how the, the piece looks yeah, yeah. in every subsequent iteration. Yeah, yeah. It was so cool. as a, uh, We looked at it and we were just like, oh god, this is so clever. It's yeah, simple. It's super yeah. simple. But it, it's, it gets the message across that kind of like, she as an artist gives away a little bit of agency, but kind of keeps as well the overall ownership of it. But yeah. you're part of a bigger thing when, when you buy it. You're not just kind of like collecting stupidly, yeah. but you have to basically act. This is brilliant. Yeah. I have to, we have to talk maybe to the, the gallery because they, they said like, if you do anything with blockchain and art, we're interested. And they, they yeah. did like really, I mean, the artist, she was like, well known. I said, yes. your art, I never heard of her, but kind of like Whitney and stuff. Yeah. So. But yeah, so they want they, that idea is like in the token, you built in a functionality that actually is the later performance that you cannot predict because it's the, the trial yeah. that the, everybody who owns a token that has a saying or has a not a saying. In it. yeah. It's like really nice because it's stretching the performance piece over time. Yeah, it could be massive. That's right. It's like, yeah. no. This is not mm -hmm. Did you install it in paper? <laughs> this weird thing where do you have multiple versions of Python installed? Whoa, this is crazy. Yeah, <laughs> um, I think they have to just install it from source. That might actually just fix it. Let's do that. Let's do this. Um, I'll go to your downloads. Where'd you download? Oh, let's put this in download. Scraper, Python setup.py install. Okay, sudo Python. Maybe. <laughs> it should work. So now I don't think you have to be in the folder. Yeah. Yeah, for some reason the pip installed. So now you okay, try to run Instagram scraper username and see if it works. What was happening? I think sometimes the pip install process doesn't it installs it in the wrong place, or or it's not in the path, or something weird. I don't understand. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but sometimes installing from source actually just fixes it. Oh. Yeah. Right, thanks. Yeah. Yes. So and I want to ask you something. Like, uh, with my thesis. So yeah. I, I've seen that there are many uh, algorithms that like. We kind of like at classification, like what you've shown that they do kind of like a cloud, saying like this image is in a this one, and do that kind of cloud of images. I mean, it's talking about T-Spins? Huh? T-Spins? Yeah. Okay. But they sort them by how similar they are. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Do you need to give them like, the starting feature for so if you're using the Open Frameworks application, like the image CC Live, it does it itself. Uh, there, it has a CubNet convolutional network inside, and it, it analyzes and all it the sorts them. 
Yeah, based on that. Because from, I mean, I, I was, I had this idea like when I saw that, like the Disney model. Mm -hmm. Because what I want to do is I want to analyze motion. Mm -hmm. So I'm already kind of like, by watching videos I record and stuff, I'm gonna see, say like, okay, I want to sort like how the arm is, how the, how people walk. And I'm really interested in like how because if I train a normal one, I need to like all the features and like type each movement. Yeah. But I also want to see if there's a way that I can give like all these like parts data for a network and for it to sort it out. Sort the like sort it by what what features exactly? Like you want to sort them by time? And not by time, but can I, I, I want to see like how different people like express themselves, like how they like someone move like more high energy and like more open, and some people move like smaller. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I, I I am going to like split apart like the parts of the body just like to get rid of like noise. Like if I'm analyzing only the arm, I'm gonna normalize the data and like put this part as zero. Yeah, I'm still not entirely sure I understand what you want the output to look like or on what basis you want it to be sorted. Okay. Like, uh, I, I can... Maybe show, yeah, or if yeah. you want to show me a picture or something, like a sketch. Um, so basically I, I want to be able to analyze and classify how... I mean, my thesis is about um, classifying um, it's about um, extracting like characteristic movements of people, so I can later amplify it. Okay. So I need to be able to get the scales of data, and according to that, first run a classification, so I can choose like what uh, texture. Are you trying more. to like uh, find sort of cluster? Yeah, also, okay. like clusters of personality. Personalities. So you would like take a video of someone and extract all the frames? I am taking. I already took a lot of data with a Kinect, okay. so I plan all the time to use that as my data set. Okay. Well, then you could. You don't have to use HTC Live, which does the analysis based on the image features. Yeah. No. I. I, I just. I just want to use something similar to the Tisney image, yeah, but I mean, like point data. Um, Tisney could do it on any kind of data. So yeah. if you already have a data set, which has you know your body coordinates or something, uh, you probably want to pre process it somehow, like, or extract. <laughs> I mean, I mean, okay, like you could maybe normalize by subtracting four star or something, so everything is like, yeah. so it's not, if you want to classify gestures or something, uh, but yeah, I mean, like, uh, if so you look at, the there's a notebook in the ML Frame Guides that shows how to, how to do the images <laughs> analysis. I know, but and if you like, just nice try. replace the features that it does, which is like extra a convolutional neural network, you can you uh, can use your own. Okay, well, you. Ultimately, you just need an n by n matrix, but not enough. Where n is the number of Thank you. your data points and m is your features. I, I know I'm in the lot for you, um, and then you can yeah. turn that into you know, I think I you But I still would need to like, identify each feature that I want. What do you mean by identify? Um, if they're all in the same column all the time, then it's fine. Oh, okay. Okay, I think Like if one column is X position elbow. I want to try okay. this photo sketch thing. Yeah. Yeah. It looks really cool. Yeah, it does. Okay. Well, because you can do a lot of funny stuff. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, because I have after class I have a meeting. Yeah. And then there's this token society thing mm -hmm. until five thirty. Mm -hmm. Which I might may or may not attend the time. <coughs> but around six? Around let me check my let me check your messages. Because like I go with Derek, you know, one of the members. Uh, I will go with Dinner for him. Yeah, so basically, something 6.30. But I will be already there, so I need you there at Palladium. 
<laughs> you need me at Palladium. Yeah. At what time? Yeah. 6 20? 6 6 something. You just pop by. Okay. It's like 6 6 20 or so we will be there. Or 6 30. Okay. <laughs> because I have dinner with Derek and then I go straight to Palladium. Yeah. yeah. But it's. You, you can just. You can just start climbing and then. Why do you guys get that? I'll tell you. I saw Oregon Rats and so Yeah, that, that's good, that's good. I mean, let me ask if, if it's still on, because one of the guys cannot come. I think I don't have your phone. That might be true. 1990. Oh, no, I do have it. You do have it? Dancing for 2.05? 99. Uh, 217. Yeah, yeah, I have it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I have it. I'll, I'll text you. Cool. Yeah, I'll see. I don't know. Maybe they... Maybe they... Because we, one of our friends can come. So everyone's back, yeah. I'm gonna just close that up. Yeah. All right. Um, I have taken to trying to install PyTorch from source, so that I can make use of CUDA, and then maybe I'll be able to show you that that photo sketch thing. That'd be really awesome. I'd be I'd be ecstatic and very surprised if this actually worked. But um, stranger things have happened, so we'll see. But anyway, um, what I want to do now is actually show you uh, a little bit about Pix to Pix. We, we, we won't really do um, a full tutorial because I actually have a full tutorial on the neural aesthetic. Um, so actually, like, it might even be better. It might it be funny if we just watch that video. But actually, I won't, I, I'll, I'm gonna show you that video. Let, let's see, guys, actually, what I wanna do is, um, just to, in the interest of, of leaving enough time to do more brainstorming, and also showing GANs and stuff, I want to, Show you the. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Okay, I'm gonna show you some slides about Pix to Pix, and we looked at it last week. So, so now I'm just gonna go dive into a little bit more detail, and then I'll actually show you a video online where you can get a much clearer <coughs> tutorial. Um, I think that'll be kind of the best use of time. Um, so let me just go to the slides. So yeah, as a hello, hello, there we go. It's all super slow. So okay. So just like a quick review. So remember, we we introduced this notion of generative models. It's it's machine learning machine learning models. This is killing me. Hang on a second. Maybe the torch installation is like really intense. I've no, I haven't seen this computer freeze up like this before. Let's get out of iTunes. And Adam. Okay. Okay. Good. So, um, 
so yeah, the the idea of generative model is that ultimately, like the simplest kind is basically your GANs and your autoencoders that are more or less have the following schema. You have a network that that is trained on a whole bunch of images, which are all some standard size and subject matter, and then the network is uh, trained in order to take a vector of random numbers, more or less random numbers, that are usually sampled from like a, a normal distribution, uh, multi-dimensional normal distribu distribution, and then uh, in, in turned into an image by through the process of forward passing through the network. So that's kind of your standard sort of vanilla generative model. And we often denote this random input variable as z, right? And it's maybe it's a maybe it's a hundred <coughs> dimensions or two hundred dimensions or five hundred or a thousand. You know, you'll 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 see. Often powers of two are very popular. Um, and then the output is an image, right? And we talked about how the space of z is is encodes the features of the image, sort of these high level. <laughs> characteristics of the image, and that it, um, oops, yeah, and that if you modulate z slowly, you get slow variations in the image. We also talk about how most generative models allow you to optionally um, encode, uh, also uh, condition on labels. So if your images also have some sort of a categorical variable, a categorical label associated with it. It doesn't even have to be a categorical one. It could, it could be any kind of label. Right? Um, and, uh, and categorical variable. Yeah, what am I saying? So, or it could be, yeah, whatever label that you have. So, like, in the instance of handwritten digits, you have categoricals. But they, they don't have to be, they could be based on, they could be some continuous value. Um, so this is all review. What is going on? Talked about some, some GANs, some of the very hyper-realistic ones. Talked about how, basically, like, our goal um, is going to be to assemble, or at least a sub-goal. This is not the only goal of the class, but at least one of the core goals is, I want to train a uh, GAN on a set of images that we assemble here. And the idea was, um, maybe we'll talk about this at the end of the class today, but, but I'm gonna try to make assignment to start collecting images. So we're basically going to just try to, try to figure out a nice, a nice theme that we could explore in terms of like um, getting our uh, images onto this, onto one compute cluster so that we could actually train. Uh, but we're going to train one of these together, uh, is the idea. And I want to use StyleGAN for it. And StyleGAN, to get full resolution, may take like may take like a week or two weeks. Um, so we don't actually have enough, that much time. But I think we have enough time to actually do it. And lastly, um, there's also conditional generative models that are not just conditioned on a label, but can be conditioned on a whole input like an input image. So this is like your image to image pipeline. So some generative models uh, are, are kind of more like filters. So like we can make a filter that takes a sketch of a shoe and colors it. Right? Um, and so this is kind of in line with the pre-processing that we were just showing. So like on, in Torch, for example. Um, so picks to picks was kind of, I, I introduced this last week, so we won't belabor it too much. But picks to picks is a repository that basically does this image to image conversion. And, um, and so for example, you can get a data set of images of satellite imagery and maps, right, for example. And you can, you can make a generative model, picks to picks, which will could take one of these and convert it into its corresponding satellite image, right? Um, so this would be really nice if you were trying to create, you know, like invisible cities of sorts. Um, yeah? yeah specifically about the model. Um, so like, for, I thought that it only accepted squares, 
Like yeah. So like with the labels, the streets. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm not sure. I think probably they just have black borders or something. But yeah, it, it does. <coughs> picks the picks. The original implementation is shaped square. Mm -hmm. Um, that's, it doesn't have to be, like, the architecture can be modified if you know what you're doing, and then, then, then you can have a different <coughs> size. Uh, like, PixPix HD, for example, actually does 1024 by 512. So, ultimately, you know, um, it's not tied to that, but in this specific repository, I think it is. Yeah. Um, okay, so then, for example, this is, this is a project I did called Invisible Cities, which we trained uh, Pixpix to convert the map tiles into the satellite images. And so, for example, if you would take the training set and run it through, you would get something that looked like this, and it looks kind of like the original, right? It's a little bit, you know, um, a little more impressionistic. It makes up its own fake boats, too, which is kind of cool. But otherwise, it's, it's pretty decent reconstruction. Um, so what you could do then is like a sort of city style transfer. So we could remove the map take the map from Los Angeles and run it through the generative model for Venice. And so you get this sort of Los Angeles cross Venice or Milan next Venice and so on. So that's just an example of something you could do. Another thing that you could do with picks to picks is, um, so this is kind of the canonical thing to do with it, is um, let's say you're interested in making, you know, uh, sketch to ske turn sketches into cats, right? So that's really, or sketches of anything into into whatever, you know, like if you want to make sketches of pianos or something. So this is actually turns out to be quite easy to do because what you what you would do is you would extract the data set of images of your subject matter that you're interested in, and then run something like the the data set utils script that I showed for grabbing the either trace of it, you know, like the outlines. Uh, running photo, running it through PhotoSketch, for example. And hopefully, we'll get to see that if this installs properly. Uh, but running it through PhotoSketch to grab this associated sketch of the image, and then you can train Pix to Pix to go from sketches to the original photo, where the sketches were actually processed. Um, but then, once you have that model, you can then suddenly just draw whatever you want, run it through, you know, like I, I make a sketch. Basically, instead of processing it, just make a sketch, run it through Pix to Pix, and it'll give you back the drawn thing, right? So, do, do you get how this was made? Like the whole cats thing, just downloaded 500 images of cats, ran it through some some um, uh, like edges edge detection algorithm, probably using OpenCV. This is just using OpenCV, like Canny edge detection, which is really simple. Like Canny is is actually like the simplest possible edge detection algorithm you could use. Something like PhotoSketch is much better. Um, that's why this should be redone, actually, with PhotoSketch. Um, in fact, um, this guy, Zaid, um, yeah, he's done some stuff. Uh, uh, I forget his, his name. Uh, oh, yeah? Yeah. Can you spell it? C. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. So he also did a version of this that works really nicely, actually. Um, um, I think. I think he had a better version of this. And actually, we put some of them into ML3. Okay. Yeah. Well, anyway. Maybe, maybe. But, but okay. Like, basically, this is a... You know, you can kind of do this kind of thing. The 50 megabyte model is a little bit bigger, but uh, oh. <coughs> no, 
about that, right? <laughs> Celebrity. Let's try this. So, okay, how is this done? They get, he gets a data set of faces, and then he, he actually has a model that splits the face into all the components. Yeah, basically something like this. So, like, okay, face. Okay, so that's just a face. Like that. Um, how about, like, something like this? Uh, yeah, this model was trained in this data set right there. Face. There's no latency there. It's kind of like it's, it's pretty quick, yeah. Because I, I wonder if it's possible to, to have like a children story or whatever and read it in and then integrate the images for it as a movie. Maybe. That would be possible. Right? This is ab outrageous. Um, yeah, it's really, it's really big cursor, yeah. Let's have another ear right there. <laughs> Fantastic. Anyway. You get the idea. Like the point is that okay, um, I got really carried away with this thing there. Anyway, and, oh, the scene one was really cool too. But okay, that, that's not the point. The the idea is that you can make data sets that are sort of like the original image and then simplified version of the image, either a sketch or a segmentation map, and then we could we could create interfaces for actually um, playing with them. And this is something that I'm doing in the long term. I'm making a data set based on wiki arts where the idea is that you'll make some like scribble on the interface and it'll turn that into a full-blown painting, right? So this is kind of like a really nice thing you could do. Here's a photo generator. There have been lots and lots of pix -to -pix, um, cool pix -to pix projects. Um, what's going on here? I think my torch installation is like really slowing down my computer. But okay, like the Pokemon generator, for some more of these. Yeah, this I showed you. And the Riddler's work I think I showed you. Oh, flying is on there. No, no way. Oh. I think this is what's slowing down my computer, but I wonder if it's actually working. <coughs> Takes a long time to build PyTorch from source. Um, okay, go back. Man, this computer is not liking me right now. Oh. There we go. Um, this one's really weird. Hands. Um, what did Memo, Memo, I showed you this project before. Like the idea was that Memo downloaded a set of images of ocean scenes, you know, oceans and rocks and beaches and stuff. And then he extracted all of the edges from those images using, using really something simple, just canny edge section, right? This is, this is kind of the easiest, the first thing you could do is canny. But really, like thing, something like PhotoSketch would make this a lot better. And PixPix Pix HD. This is an old project though, so so by now, you know, I'm sure if no one did it again, he would use some other things. But it's pretty cool, right? It like makes and then and then okay, so then what is he doing? Then he just grabs a camera and puts random things underneath the camera, you know, tissue papers and his hands and you know webcam, which and then extracts the edges from those things and then takes the edge map and then sends that as the input to pix to pix and then will produce the thing that it was trained on, which is beaches, 
right? So this webcam becomes a rock, right? And later on, he, he runs it through other models, fire, which is really neat. He also has flowers. So on car keys, so pretty, pretty neat stuff. Okay, I might just put on the slides and then show you the tutorial. Oh, goodness gracious. Because the f uh, most of the PyTorch stuff doesn't really work very well without GPU. Oh, PhotoSketch. Okay. Yeah, PhotoSketch for sure, yeah. Because PhotoSketch, I just ran it online and it worked fine. Really? It's like Clumnot. You just use the environment with Microsoft. Huh. Yeah, the, uh, the environment, it's like it's... But then I have to reinstall everything else because I'm not using Clumnot. Oh, you don't use Clumnot. Yeah. Um, okay, this is horrendous. Oh, yeah. Another thing you could do is face face extraction. So we could make a face uh, face to section. So this is more or less the same thing. It's just like canny edge section, except um, instead of using the edges from a canny edge sector, we use a face tracker. And everyone's seen a face tracker before. You know, those are more or less straightforward. Um, and uh, for example, I also have a, I also did that. So like you can make a face puppet of somebody. Right, so I think that's already the next thing. Man, this is brutal. Every slide takes like a minute to pull up. I'm just gonna... Yeah. Is it possible to run the photo sketching in real time? The concrete line. Sorry? The concrete line in real time. Uh, photo sketch stuff? Yes, uh, in fact, we have that, you know, on the installed in the machine downstairs. It's not super real time because each each version takes um, maybe a quarter second or a half second or something. So you could do like one or two frames per second. So it's not too bad. Um, yeah, so I think I showed a lot of these slides. So I'm going to, last week, right? So let's actually get out. You've, you've seen a lot of these examples already. So what I want to do is direct you to a good tutorial. We're not going to do, I'm not going to do it in front of you right now. Instead, I'm just going to show you where you could find the tutorial. But also, this is just... Um, if you were to go to mlparade again, have that IO. It's also and and in the classes. Oh, first of all, there is actually in mlparade. If you go if you go to the guides, there's actually a Pixel Picks guide, which is right here. This is just for the original pix to pix not for pix pix HD. We could really use one of those. But this kind of goes through a lot of what I just showed you and then also uh, has a little, bit more, um, a little bit more of a detailed layout of the tool itself than you might find in the GitHub. It just kind of tells you what you need to, to provide it. This is more or less how to train and test images. But then um, a tutorial in video, a video tutorial that shows everything being done in paper space, you can find inside of the classes. So if you go to the neural aesthetic, um, it's conditional generative models. This is the, all about pix to pix And the actual tutorial starts, uh, let's see here. Yeah, striking faces. Yeah, the, more or less, it's the second half of this. You tag this manually? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's no big deal. It's like, just give a few, takes five minutes. So, 
the so yeah you can so that goes through a tutorial of how to use the PixPix software also PixPix HD which is the bigger version of it oh and the other thing we could have shown is how to do face extraction so that's actually we didn't do that let's see if we can that might be a nice thing to show real quick before we do the brainstorm so if I go to ML Bray guides utils so it'd be like, I can grab a, you know, let's say like Python data set utils input source. Again, we'll do, maybe there's some faces in the, well, we need a, um, yeah, I guess this, this may not work properly, but let's see, it downloads. I mean, it's like this, sorry. <laughs> there is a, if you go to here, it, what I was going to show you is you can, see, you can see it here, extracting faces from a movie. So basically, data set utils, another thing that you could do, one of the, uh, one of the things it does faces, face detection, and then we'll easily create a data set of face markers uh, linked to a, a face inside of an image. Um, so yeah, that's something there. So okay, uh, let me quickly... See if there's anything else. There's a nice big size pix pix model. I showed you the dense pose stuff. Dense pose is another really neat thing. Um, we don't have much time for that. There's basically there's tons of incredible things that you could do with pix to pix. So for example, like next frame prediction is a really neat one. Mario did a lot of this. Basically. So that's pix to pix trained to predict the next frame of a video of fireworks. So he trained it on a video of fireworks, and what he trained was the pairs of images was frame one to frame two, frame two to frame three, frame three to frame four, and so on. Basically like picks to picks to predict the next frame. And then once you have that, you can run it as a feedback loop. So then basically just make generative video um, this one's pretty hard to get right. Like I tried to do it on Super Mario Brothers and it didn't work for me. But um, but it works pretty well. Fireworks, like really fluidy things, seem to work really nicely, like fire um, and so on. Yeah, like like this one, uh, this guy Damian Henry at Google, he did he took a video from the train window and then did like a next frame prediction. So you get this like endless endless train window stuff, which is really nice. The clouds come out pretty, pretty nice. And this guy um, in Japan, uh, Keijiro Takahashi, he made a Unity controller that uses pix to pix So this is really rad. And it's also next frame, trained on next frame prediction. But also, like, I'm not actually sure what the what the sliders are actually doing. Maybe they control the speed or something, but but uh, but basically, yeah. Really neat, right? Mario's done a lot more things like uh, with faces. Yeah. And then there's cycle again, which is the same thing, except images don't have to be paired. Okay. So that's more or less all of the Sort of con there's more content here, but let me just show you a few more examples so you're familiar with the breadth of things that you could do with PixPix. Um, and, and also cycle again, this is kind of cool. It's like turning faces into into fruits. believe that a computer can generate a portrait but it cannot tell basically how good you stand in front is. of it and it turns your face into a bunch of fruits that deals with curatorship and with decision making you got the idea right? for represents a painter so um, that one is trained using cyclegan because cyclegan is like pix to pix except it doesn't require the images to be exactly paired so you can just have a folder of images of faces 
and a folder of images of fruits, and it will figure out a relationship to map one to the other. Um, you could also, that's how you would do something like cat to dog or dog to cat. It's a really good dog to cat, right? It's like really good. It's really like impressive. Um, or, you know, Trump to cat. Country as a piggy bank to rebuild China and many other countries are doing. Um, th this person ran cycle again through, um, I forget what software this is, uh, through uh, SketchUp, I think. So it just takes whatever random things you make in SketchUp and textures them. That's pretty cool. <laughs> this is a, from noodles to rice. <laughs> Um, so again, on, on uh, MIDI music, so there's a lot of cool things you can do with this kind of stuff. Um, turn, um, what's his face, Oliver, uh, John, John Oliver into Stephen Colbert, or different kinds of fruits into each other, or different kinds of flowers into each other. Music videos. Right. Okay, and I'll, I'll skip the yellow stuff. So basically, the um, so picks to picks like super super cool thing that you could use. And basically, picks to picks, you know, we may or may not end up using it. Uh, the first thing I wanna, I really wanna prioritize is making uh, generic generative models some photographs. Uh, but let's see what we can come up with. Okay, so what I'd like to do in these in this final whatever half hour it is is do another brainstorming session. And this one, I want to try to impose a little bit more structure, if, I, if we can, on it. And, yeah. Ooh, okay. So last week what we did was we kind of like had this process where we just went around and made some ideas. This time I want to try something a little bit more experimental and try to get people into groups. So like, like, um, and we can kind of mess with the parameters of this, but what I was thinking is we could like count off, make, let's say, groups of, let's see, how many of us are there in here? 20? Like 20 people? So what if we had five groups of four come up with two ideas? No, let's say one idea. See, the numbers are arbitrary, kind of, but like, let's say five groups of four come up with three ideas each, small ideas. And then we'll put them on the list and then we'll kind of try to connect them. What do you do? Does anyone think that's a terrible idea? Like, in this story? Do you do this in your other classes, like group, like group exercises? Yeah, okay. Okay, so let's, let's try this. Basically, here will be the procedure. We'll, you'll go into your groups, and then, and this is the thing that, and I want to write down the parameters of this, right? Um, hang on a second, let's take these. Oh, remember this? So come up with an idea, and then the idea should try to be some sort of an interactive scenario, just like last week, right? Like an interactive scenario. And then once we get a bunch of them on the board, we're going to maybe do this breakup process again and try to come up with ways of converting them into each other, and then basically share them. Like we'll go around the table and share them. Um, does that work? What do you think? Interactive scenario you mean like with? Or I mean, I mean, how to how to connect them to each other. But that's part two. That's part two. Oh, okay. so let's that's do part, part one first. Okay. Um, is this well designed? Well, what do you think? Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So let's do this. Start, uh, count. What do we say? Five groups of four. Or four groups of five. Well, actually, I don't know how many. How many do we have? One, two. Let's do. Let's count. Uh, yeah. How many things do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Yeah, five point people. So let's say five groups of four. So count off by fives, right? So one, two, three, five, one, two, three, five. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, 
okay, and I'm sick. So, um, so basically, if you are ones come here, to, uh, we said five, right? So one, two, three, four, five, okay? And here's the idea, and I'll come around to each group maybe, and just see what's going on. And we'll do this for the next 10 minutes. We'll do this for 10 minutes and then collect ideas. Cool. Yeah. Four, two, three. <coughs> so yeah, twos are over there. One, one, down there, one, maybe four. One, and then fives will be like in this corner. Jason, are you one? Oh, five. You're five. Ones. We need more ones. Where are the ones? Where's the ones? Where are the ones? Where are the ones? Good job. So, you guys remember the. <laughs> <laughs> so remember the goal the goal is to get three ideas. Three ideas, three ideas that, that involve a Four? Uh, Yeah, basically, like, like, like uh, an idea that involves an input and an output, and, and some like interaction. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Try, to, try to think of a concrete interactive installation that appeals to all of it. And our three ideas must be connected. Sorry? Our three ideas must be connected. No, they're not going to be connected. They're just separate ideas. Yeah. Yeah. But, but you know what, actually, that's a good exercise to be able to connect them to each other. So, not required, but, but if you could connect them to each other, then you'll be able to connect them to other people. I think it's a good And so someone should log these ideas eventually. Like, each one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> 
And then we'll and then we'll uh, share.
on an old idea, but uh, the picture, the picture yeah. where the camera can picture you, that will be supported by the world test, and that will be subjected to security. One more minute, and then we'll do the uh, image. Picture image, and then you generate something, it runs up through the network of the test. Guided session. So, everybody, everybody. All right. This is when I flail my hands around. That means the session is done. So, okay. So here's here's how we'll try to do this. So now we'll go around, and then everyone, uh, you get everyone can you know you can have a, announce a speaker. Or each one can do one if you'd like, and then basically describe your three ideas um, as concretely as you can. And then what we'll do is um, we'll then go back to another session where the idea will be to pick one of your own and then one from uh, any two others, basically like two ideas from other groups, and try to connect them as an A to B to C, like chain them together. Right? So that's going to be the goal. So, so yeah, uh, let's see how this works. Uh, let's start it with one. Uh, what are, let's hear some, some ideas. Uh, so we talked more about inputs and outputs. Mm -hmm. So we had one because we were talking about uh, the sound of language and like, uh, for example, like German and Chinese are completely different because like Chinese you have kind of like different amplitude of pitch, uh, whereas you don't have that in German. So we thought like, it would be interesting to have like um, language or speech controlling the speed of red notes and uh, red notes uh, mm -hmm. in New York to kind of like have some sort of language body interaction. Um, so the, the treadmill. Is, treadmill yeah. so, mm -hmm. so basically you talk and, and it changes and um, <laughs> the um, then we had some idea about um, ant farms because we love ant farms. Um, and they kind of like have a nice little like mapping structure like it's, it's like the, the city maps. We thought like it would be interesting to compare ants to real people from a like a talk to you, so maybe map the movement of ants to real people in city, uh, like in Google Street View or something well, like that. Well, what's the interaction exactly? You can't control uh, people. On that's, a, that's, a, that's a very good question, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, number three uh, was, this is a bit of an odd one, mm -hmm. it was actually to map the movement of toddlers because they all have Right, uh, to uh, nuclear submarines, which is probably not <laughs> yeah. uh, So, but somehow, like movement of toddlers to objects in the real world, it could be robots, it could be like kind of representation. Okay, so like you're tracking a toddler, and then the you way that toddler the moves, yeah. you feed the toddler. To <laughs> no, you don't. We believe by the beginning of the data, uh, you can either track the real movement of the. Of the Body, but I, just, uh, I mean, the submarines was just kind of like double entendre with the feeding, <laughs> feeding so the toddler. Anyway, yeah. 
Uh, so the movement of the toddler controls something. What? What would it be like? The... Uh, it could be. I think we talked about it the other day. It could be like a fountain. It should be a real physical object in the world. A public fountain is all public stuff in the art. This fountain. And I, mean, I still love submarine collecting. Like, yeah, yeah. But what was a movement of ants controlling what? What was that? Yeah, that's uh, unclear. What was that? Uh, generating. Oh yeah, generating people and Google. Generating people as though they're ants. Yes. Yeah, well, not like real people, but the, their movement or the direction where they go is basically huh. controlled by an ant farm. Um, Mapping people's movements on Google Maps. And then we had the last one, which was. Uh, so whatever the artificial uh, autonomous agent creates, uh, that should be mapped to storytelling, and that gets induced to a person during the REM sleep phase, because we talked about this, that there's a 40% chance that whatever somebody tells you during that phase, they can dream about that. But wait, how, how are you going to actually so, do that? Is so you get an output, and whatever, it's like you have the, the artificial Whatever uh, image you give that to this to uh, you show image capturing uh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, uh, network. The image capturing network creates a story out of that, maybe based on uh, whatever the, what was it, the story telling thing. Um, and then you narrate that, or you basically just have speech to sound, and then that plays and continues stream while you're sleeping. Mm -hmm. and so there's Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, whatever the image to I am to text, which then goes to storyboard, or it's like a. It could be. It could be seeded to any. But then the point is to try to induce a dream in somebody by telling them the story. Okay. Or it could be just words. I think if you if you hear cat all the time, you probably will scream about that. Induce scream. All right. Well, the first one, speech, uh, the speech controlled treadmills. Yeah. Uh, I forgot the second part of that. What was that supposed to? Just controlling the treadmill. Yeah, just like an output. So we were thinking about of it, physical output. Controlling its speed. Speed. So like, uh, depending on what you say. Yeah. Voice controlled, or speech controlled. Treadmill speed. Right. <laughs> somehow we want to get our hands on the data set of seamless. Which would be really seamless? Cool. Yeah, because they have this amazing data set of what we are using. We will never get it, Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. Thank you. All right, let's get number two. Group two. Who's, who's narrating? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so we have a few ideas. One was to create a sort of like vertical Fisker game using uh, PostNet, so like trying to match different points to um, like thoughts on a projection or something. How, how does that work exactly? So you, um, you're, you're, it's like Twister. So you're told by Posnet to do something, or, or Posnet yeah. tracks you? Posnet would track you, and it would be like a game built around it, so mm -hmm. indicating where you had to, or which joint you had to use to like collect certain. What relationship would the would the suggestions have to what's being tracked? Like, okay, it's tr it's tracking you, and then does it try to tell you the next place to put your joints yes. in such a way that makes it as difficult as possible? Yeah, right. All right. Like, okay, so how about PoseNet tracking um, game of Twister suggests, it, basically PoseNet suggests moves for Twister, difficult moves for Twister, instead of the spin wheel. Okay, cool. Um. Another was to control some sort of game, like probably like a very simple like brick breaker type game over uh, EEG using Webinator because EEG can send OSC um, or like 
Br brick breaker games. Yeah. Like like breakout, right? Yeah, where yeah, you have the paddle board. Very yeah. Simple Control breakout with EEG. Yeah. Do you have a do, do we have a headset here? Yeah. Okay. Does it work? Like. No. I, I've been trying to get it to work the past couple of days and had It's so like hard. someone tells you like, okay, think really hard. It's like, <laughs> think really hard. It does work. I only use it last week to like throw like to like trigger like our thing to like throw oil on this. I'll believe when I see it. <laughs> All right. Okay. Put, Oh, uh, yeah, there, that's, um, there's one called ESR again, which does that pretty well. Waifu 2XX, two, Waifu 2X also. <laughs> Sorry? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is there another idea? Or just those two? Yeah, so like transfer, like, I need to, you know, like, like, use the camera and you need to uh, uh, holy crap, it's almost 2.40. Jesus. <laughs> um, wow, you didn't really time this well. Who has to leave at 2.40? Yeah, you really do, don't you? But then, like, half of you have to leave. Have to leave. Um, As you can see, this is not my, my bread basket. How do we... Okay, well, obviously, we'll, we'll continue this into next week, but, but let's see if we can at least get around through all five groups so we don't forget these ideas, okay? So we just have a few more minutes. So we'll, we'll carry, like, three minutes late, you guys. Like, we have six minutes, let's say. Okay, um, group... Uh, wait, sorry, what was the last one? It was... Camera to flowers. Okay, let's put that in. Human camera tracking face body creating flowers. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, group three. Who wants to share? So you so of, for a particular place you collect Instagram uh, or sorry geotag image geo okay and you get a list of uh, is that correct is it like yeah. a list of words a texture right okay generate image texture uh, on, on top of the satellite image kind of like an image yeah. Yeah. okay oh top of okay yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Any others? Some other ideas? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So a decision generator, what, uh, how does it, uh, from, based on what, like, uh, mm -hmm. 
Okay. Almost like a social media like assistant who's like tracking your social media to tell you like what you need to do next. Okay, decision generator, agency stealer. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, any any others? Yeah. Okay. Um, and if, if the coding part is too difficult, it's like changing the inputs that go into the lab code sketch. Yeah, it will definitely be too difficult, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but that would be really rad. Right. Yeah. Okay. What's the what's the, what are the inputs for this live coder? Uh, like something I thought about was just like like if you're using like Hydra, like you just feed in a bunch of Hydra. Hydra. What's Hydra? It's like a JavaScript based one. And so you could feed in different source code of Hydra sketches, uh -huh. and then maybe run a linter on top to make sure it's actually valid. Uh huh. Uh huh. And then uh -huh. see what computer generates. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Um, number four. We're almost done, guys. Number four. Some ideas. So one was have a book, a type of like old a trackpad, like the retro projected with the camera. So you would put your hands on fingers, mm -hmm. and it would generate kind of uh, the that kind of firework thing that you showed, like mm -hmm. generating fireworks or rivers. But actually, is there a camera on your hands or something? Or? Yeah, like on, on the back. So it, you, this is like a sheet of paper that's mm -hmm. projected and just like generates shadows, uh -huh. and that takes it as the source. But later, we instead of generating like fireworks and stuff like that, we want to generate a kind of like a city. A city map, uh -huh. because the second idea is to uh, track people and replace people by cars. Mm -hmm. And uh, and if it's like only one person, it's like a motorcycle or a small car. It's like four. If you have four people together, it can be a bus. Uh -huh. So the size of the car is also related to how many people are together. Okay. And and you put and then you put like those cars in that map. As well. Okay. And the third idea was, oh yeah, so uh, use like uh, speech detection, mm -hmm. and it gets transformed into different like animals, like into like meowing or <laughs> yeah, yeah. lion roar or whatever. Okay. And that also has like another input, which is like which animal, like we don't know how to decide, and it can be an external input. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, was there, that's two ideas, right? Or is there a third one? I mean, it was three because like the shadows were doing like these fluids or like fireworks and stuff like that. Uh-huh. And we make them so do the cities. The first idea and the second ah, idea. okay, okay, okay. And then the people, yeah. So there's kind of an idea it, that has two, you've already chained them together. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I'll keep, I'll keep it like this. Yeah, and, and the, car, the cars then are generated by like track people. And like uh, depending, it's like transforming people to cars, and depending how many people are together, the, the car that is put in the city. So they're really different two ideas, but yeah. like gotcha. the same theme. Okay. Yeah. Uh, last one before we head out. Um, I do have a nice sketch yeah. <laughs> um, of like a haunted house, but uh -huh. like. Um, so the haunted house would be based on like uh, image taken of you, and then your like greatest fear when smashed together through like the thing you showed before, where yeah. it's like very grotesque images of like humans. Yeah. Like so, it's kind of like a grotesque image of you being projected to like scare you in this, uh -huh. like, in this space. Okay. It's like edge detection and like yeah. people that are like in between categorizations like big guns that are very freaky. Grotesque mirror. Yes. Yeah. It's called a grotesque mirror. Grotesque mirror haunted house. Yes. And then the other one was just like I don't know what subject. Maybe it would be like about dreams, like you said. But it's like have like a mental activity, I mean neural activity mapped to some of like some gun that you can like go do the interpolation with mm -hmm. like how your what data you're thinking or whatever. 
the what you showed last week. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So neural activity that uh, is conditioning a gener gener yeah. yeah. You just control a seed or the yeah, yeah. We could, we could yeah. We can totally do that. And I know, like, if we can get a good reliable signal. Yeah. Right. From the. Well, from we can the head. It, you know, Like, what is the matter. best head tracking thing in at ITP? Is there is there something like because because the cheap ones they're just. It's just noise, basically. Yeah. Is there is there anything that's like, one, like if you go, I'm thinking, you can get the color red or something, and then. You know. I don't know how well it works, but the emotive has like the most sensors, and I've heard things yeah, okay. about it, yeah. but I haven't been able. We can to also lie about the data. That we, can. <laughs> <laughs> we can tweak it. <laughs> Conditioning in. Yeah. Okay. Uh, was there another one? Yeah, no. I think um, maybe kind of like a human centipede situation. Um, <laughs> uh, I believe. I be Am I thinking, does everyone know what I'm thinking about? There's that movie, The yeah. Human yeah. Centipede. <laughs> oh, you really mean, you really... <laughs> I mean, like, 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 um, left over and like yeah over. And, and, and isn't just at the end just static uh, I don't know I just uh -huh. was thinking about uh, like many people uh, yeah, contributing to something that um, sort of uh, has different um, I don't know I was thinking about transferring this content mm -hmm. just like uh, so far I've just got human centipede <laughs> <laughs> and that's the well, we won't. It's it's too like close to lunch, I guess. Uh, <laughs> all right, we we've gone really late. I know. I'm sorry for keeping you. So like next uh, next week, we're gonna basically try to brainstorm combining these. So I'll actually I'll actually email these out to everyone. So so to keep them in fresh in your head. Do you want us um, to collect the the data or whatever that you want? Oh. Um, yes, but let me email you about that. Uh, let me figure out exactly how we should. Yeah might be like, because I haven't figured out what we should collect. I mean, images, but like of what? Um, that's something to, so not yet. Yeah, we'll do this. Um, okay, cool. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Hey, yeah. <laughs> oh.